Welcome to Science Excel, where our motto is to enhance the learning curve. In today's tutorial, let's understand the concept of osmosis. Have you tried soaking raisins in water for a while? Do you know what happens? I'm sure you have noticed that the raisins swell up. This is because the water from the surrounding medium enters the cells of raisins which have a high sugar concentration causing them to swell. This is the result of a process called osmosis. Osmosis is a simple natural process that occurs all around and even inside us and it is one of the most vital processes for our survival. It functions as a life preserver. Let us explore more about osmosis. Observe the container which is partitioned by a semi-permeable membrane. We add sugar solutions of two different concentrations on either side of the membrane. A dilute sugar solution on side A and a concentrated sugar solution on side B. This means the concentration of water on side A is obviously more as compared to side B. Sugar molecules are many times larger than the water molecules and hence cannot pass through the membrane, whereas water molecules can. An interesting thing to know about osmosis is that the movement of water is affected by the amount of substances dissolved in it. Let us perform an experiment to understand this better. Water is at a higher potential on side A and at lower potential on the side B. So we see that the water molecules move from side A to side B. And for how long do you think this movement takes place? It will occur till the concentration of water is balanced that is equalized on both the sides. This is called osmosis. Osmosis is the diffusion of water molecules from a region of higher water potential to a region of lower water potential through a partially permeable membrane. It is a passive process that means it does not require energy. Let us take a plate containing some red blood cells in a concentrated salt solution. The water content in this concentrated salt solution is less as compared to the water content inside the cells. So the water molecules move from inside the cells to the outside as the concentration of water is higher within the cells. We observe that the cells start to shrink or shrivel. This kind of solution is called as hypertonic solution. Now let us look at the second plate. The concentration of salt solution both inside the red blood cells and outside in the plate is the same. Therefore, the net movement of water molecules is the same in both the directions. That is, from inside to outside and outside to inside. As a result, the size of the cells does not change. This kind of a solution is called an isotonic solution. In the third plate, the cells are surrounded by a dilute salt solution. The salt dissolved in this solution is less and the water content is higher as compared to the water content inside the cells. Therefore, water molecules move inside the cells from outside causing the cells to swell. Such a solution is called as a hypertonic solution. These are the three types of osmotic conditions that help cells to sustain pressure and to survive. Now let us recap what we have learned. A hypertonic solution has a higher concentration of salt outside the cell and higher water concentration inside it. So water moves out of the cell causing it to shrink. An isotonic solution has an equal quantity of salt and water inside and outside the cell. Hence, the net movement of water is the same in and out of the cell. So, the size of the cell does not change. A hypotonic solution
has a higher concentration of salt inside the cell and higher water concentration outside. So, water moves inside the cell causing it to swell. Osmosis is one of the processes by which transportation of substances is carried out. Active transport is another process responsible for the transportation of substances. Stay tuned to learn more about active transport in our next tutorial.